Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about our required reading for our 2019-2020 school year. My son is in the sixth grade, and these are all the books that we'll be reading throughout the year, either independently, he will read it on his own, or we will do it as a read aloud. We have about, I think we have about 27 books that we're reading this year, and I will show you the actual books, but I wanted to show you a little summary that I also created with book descriptions for my son. So this is the order in which we will read the books. The second column gives you the book name, a brief summary, and where it falls for our social studies, okay? So for our American history, it looks like we have a total of 12 books. And we are reading these books as we are learning that time period within any specific course. I wanted to make sure that one, our social studies was integrated throughout our um, various um, courses, specifically English, language, arts, and composition. I didn't want to do what I did last year, which was randomly give him some really good books to read and never really integrated it into our lessons. So this year, I want to use literature to beef up history. I want to use literature to give him a um, an appetite to learn more about what took place in various um, times within history using a timeline approach for history. Okay. So as we are reading these books, that is what we're learning throughout our social studies. And then we're going to also apply that in English language arts and composition. If we're learning about a, a specific event in history, then of course I want to tie in English language arts. That's the actual book itself. We can do some composition writing. We can also do some copy work, narration, dictation. We can um, practice our grammar skills. We can do some literary analysis just through the books that we're reading for our social studies. I hope that makes sense and I hope you understand what I mean when I say I want to integrate our courses together as much as possible using literature. So let's go move on. Here are all the books we are reading under the heading of world history. And we are doing ancient times this year for world history. So we're reading 15 books for world history. 15 books and under the column of world history. For multicultural literature here, we're reading five books. And some of these books were in our reading last year, but we just didn't get to it. So I went ahead and added it here. Okay. So the books that are multicultural more than likely will be um, his independent reading, except for who was Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, we'll do that together. And more than likely, A Long Walk to Water, we'll do that together. So again, I just wanted to first show you a little summary that I created for both he and I, which will be a part of our portfolio um, for um, to show what we've done for the sixth grade year. Again, it shows the required reading, the book name, the order in which we will read these specific books, and what category they fall in in terms of social studies, history. But again, they will also be tied to language arts and composition. So let me go ahead and show you these books. We're super excited. Hold on, let me show it to you. One sec, sec. So many of these books he will read together. And what I mean by that is, for example, this book falls under our American history, okay? And as you can see, it says number one, because that's the first book, like I said earlier, that we will be reading for American history. Number one, number one. Now, if you look at our ancient history, ancient history, for world history, um, number one, it says that book there. 
And this is the book that he will be reading. All that, and as you can see, it says number one. Apologies, my phone was dying, so you might see the cord <laughs> in the video. And now it's a little blurry. How can I take that out? Okay, there we go. Cool. Okay, so you will see number one. This is the first book we're reading for American history, U.S. history, specifically U.S. history. And this also says number one, which is the first book we are reading for world history, ancient times this year. What that means is we can read these books together, okay? Although the topics are different, my son is able to read more than one book at a time. So he can choose to read this book for two weeks in, in a month and then this book within a month and take two weeks. Or he can take a month to read these books and he can read a chapter of this book today, a chapter of that book tomorrow, then back to this book the next day, then that book. He will decide how he wants to do that. However, in my lesson plan, we will be learning about um, Indians, American Indians, or Native Americans, I apologize, Native Americans for American history. And for world history, we're going to be talking about ancient Egypt during this particular month in which these books are going to be read. So I wanted to show you that so that you understood when you look at these books and you see these numberings here, you understand um, how we're doing it. So let me go ahead and show you what we're reading under the umbrella of American history. You already saw number one. This is number two. Super excited about this. So is my son, number three. We will do a actual unit study on that where, where we will take, I think I have a month. No, I think three weeks dedicated to the Salem witch trials. And then he would read four and then five. And then we have a month unit study on the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, what all that meant. And then we have book six, book seven. Again, the order that we're reading these books, when we get to these books, more than likely, the goal is to discuss those topics within our social studies scope and sequence within our social studies course. So if I'm talking about slave, we're reading a book about slavery, then more than likely we are on that topic <clears throat> within our social studies for American history, U.S. history. These two books specifically, we will read them together. So we will read one chapter from this, then one chapter from here, one chapter from here, one chapter from here. We will go back and forth. So if I have, if I gave him three weeks to read these books, then within three weeks, these two books will be completed because he is reading a chapter a day from each book. So chapter one, chapter one, chapter two, chapter two, you're reading it together for a reason. Okay. Book eight, book nine. Book 10, we will do a unit study on this. Book 11, we will do a month unit study on the Civil War. My son loves these interactive history adventure books because they have so many paths, choices, and endings. He loves these types of books. Let me flip through it really quick for you. And the last book, number 12, for U.S. history. And he's excited about this book as well. And again, all of these books have summaries. So my son can always go. It's really blurry. I apologize. My son can always go and look at the summary to get a sneak peek of what he is to read. What I also wanted to mention is as my son is reading his books, he's required to take these sticky notes here and write 
anything that comes to mind at the end of every chapter that he reads within any specific read aloud or independent book that I so choose. On his sticky note, he is to write, he can write um, a question, something that's thought provoking based on something that he read. If he wants to anticipate what's going to happen next, he can use his sticky note and do that. If he wants to introduce a character and provide some descriptions of that character, if he wants to talk about the setting or an event that took place, he just has to pull out something of his choosing from every chapter, okay? And then what he'll do, He can do this at the end of the book, or he can do this at the end of the chapter, or if he wants to wait and read three chapters and then go back and do it, it's up to him. He will do summary note cards where he will um, have a chapter, have a note card for every chapter, and behind it, he will have to write a summary of that chapter. When all the note cards are completed, The goal is to have me or dad read the note cards and narrate the story back to him based on the note cards. If we basically explain the book in a nutshell, a nutshell, and we recap the book, he met the goal of writing a good summary. If we got any event or the ending or anything wrong, then that means there may be something wrong with his summary and he will be required to go back and make the correction. Another idea is to do a character analysis. He can choose one or two characters from any story. I'm sorry, from, from he can choose one or two characters from the book and he will have to do a character analysis. He can also choose two books, right? And he can do a Venn diagram, compare and contrast between the characters in each book. So get the main character here, main character here, do a Venn diagram, explain the differences between each character. And in a Venn diagram, the middle connects where he can go ahead and discuss the similarities of the two characters. Or he can do a port, port, portrait portrait <laughs> of a scene or the character. He can paint, watercolor, paint, draw, do something based on something that sparked his interest within the story. But he will be required to do things like that for the majority of the books that he reads. But again, I will choose those books for him. And if he wants to do one on in, on a specific book, he can do that as well. So the sticky note that I was talking about and the um, note cards and the character analysis and the Venn diagram, that will be done across any book that we read under our required reading category. Let's go ahead and dive into our reading for world history. So for world history, ancient times, this is book one. This is book two. And the next book I'm going to show you also has number two on it. So what that means is whatever we are learning about in our curriculum for ancient times world history, these two books marry well together. They match well together. They work well together. So he will be able to read this book and that book within the specified time. Normally, I give him two weeks minimum for a book, four weeks maximum for a book. It just depends on the number of pages. And that is outlined within my lesson plan. And he's aware of that when he gets to the book. Okay, so these two books he will read together. Let me go ahead and flip through this book for you. So that was book number two. Book number three, we did not get to this last year, but that's okay. What I also wanted to mention, a part of our social studies is also Bible. For our Bible 
study, all we do is we literally open the Bible and we read, we discuss, we do projects, we do, I create games and things of that nature. So for world history, ancient times, the goal is for Bible to complete Genesis through Deuteronomy. We did Genesis last year in the fifth grade, and we will just do a brief review of Genesis, the current events, make not current events, the major events that took place, making sure he understands the lessons and the morals behind them. And then for sixth grade year, we're going to dive into Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And that will tie into ancient um, times for world history. And we'll do the same thing next year for medieval times for world history. We will... Um, continue with certain Bible selections. This is book number four. Let me go ahead and open that for you. Or did you see some things there? So that's book number four. Book number five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let me go ahead and explain that to you again. As you can see with books eight and nine here, this one also says eight and nine. Again, while he's reading book eight, he can read this book with it. While he's reading book nine, he can read this book along with it. Okay. So all these books right here can go together. Book eight and nine. He can read this with eight or nine and he can read this with eight or nine. Let me go ahead and let you see this one. Sorry for my ashy fingers, ashy hands. So we would be on Greece um, if he were reading these books here. So let me show you the different endings here. You read once you get here. And then you would turn to that page. Let's say we turn to 77. Then we would start reading on this page. And then it will tell you to continue turning the page. Keep going, keep going. And if you got to this one, it will tell you, based on what you want to do next, turn to the next page. And it'll tell you exactly where to turn. He loves these types of books. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's move on. Ten. Book eleven. Book twelve. Go ahead and flip through this one. Book 13. I'm super excited about book 14 because we're going to do a one, a one month study. So we're going to take one month to read this book, watch a movie and discuss um, Shakespeare with Julius Caesar. And then we have one of these here, which will also be read with that book there. This book here, Tales from Shakespeare, has various stories and they are really good because they will help the child quickly understand um, the point of each of the stories. So eventually we'll get to Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet and the Tempest and Hamlet and Winter's Tale. Oh my God, I love Shakespeare. Uh, I just love it. But um, we're going to focus on Julius Caesar. So we're only going to read the portion of this book 
that is about Julius Caesar, which is only like two to four pages, I think. And then 15, we will close out world history, ancient times with Rome. And here are all the things that we'll talk about from this book in Rome. And again, like I said earlier in the video, whatever book we are reading ties directly with whatever we are learning in social studies and geography will be used across the board. Wherever we are in history, we are focusing on human and world geography as well. To include the basic skills of mapping. And so forth. So guys, that is it. Those are all the books we will be reading this year. I am so super excited. Um, if you have any questions for me, please leave them in the um, comment box below. And as always, guys, you be blessed and make it a great day. Happy reading. Bye.